to walk in on this, I was uh, coming in from the 5th District where, believe it or not, uh, we don't read everything that happens in the Daily Journal. <coughs> Uh, the old story when I came on this job is the only person over the ridge who reads the uh, Daily Journal is the person who's elected uh, to the Board of Supervisors from the 5th District. That's no longer the case. Uh, the reality is that uh, this board has had a very clear and open policy, even when the majorities uh, uh, went 3-2 whatever way. Uh, this board has always had a policy of being open and above board and making the materials available. If uh, the, if a particular newspaper is anxious to get in a, uh, a, an argument with uh, the Board of Supervisors or county government, uh, then it, it, it uh, flail away. But my feeling here is that uh, to say, to tie this into our voting for Obama, et cetera, et cetera, is rather florid. And I find that just uh, almost humorous in the context of the fact is this is about as open a body as you'll find anywhere. Uh, maybe it'd be good if our reporter would cover our meetings from the beginning. I saw that he just arrived a minute ago and, uh, and stay here through the full day to observe what is happening, to come in, touch down, and take off again, and then launch an attack on this Board of Supervisors or this staff for failing to be open and so forth and to begin the day this way is not something that makes me really very happy about being a supervisor and having a lot of work to do today and I apologize for this comment but I think it really has to be made. Uh, we are not going to get in an argument with someone who buys ink by the barrel to paraphrase Mark uh, Twain. Thank you. Uh, supervisor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, interesting discussion um, with respect to transparency, and I, uh, I think some good comments have been made. I think that we obviously have to, uh, to continue, as Council said, salaries being released. That, did, that definitely happened last year. Uh, sometimes these record requests get processed, and then not much really comes of it with respect to um, how that information is conveyed to the public. But we're under different uh, levels of responsibility and transparency than the press. The press picks up what they want to do one moment to the next, and it has to do with uh, a lot of things that get in infused into their process. Politics, uh, you know, the issue du jour, whatever is kind of is rolling forward. So I think everyone has to understand that uh, there are complexities on both sides. And, I, and, and council has stated that information has been released. I also think that we do need to set the right tone, and I, and I believe that that's what Supervisor Brown is attempting to do, is we need to set the right tone for transparency. Maybe everyone doesn't understand that information was released last year. We can certainly release it again this year. These are all valid things that, that we need to respond to. And as Council said, we're going, we will respond to these within a timely manner. And I think that that's, that's uh, d uh, delineated as to our time frames to respond. So to Supervisor Brown's comments, it, it probably would be timely to have something perhaps in a workshop setting that talks about uh, the public's right to know, various conduits in which the public can receive information, what information is available on websites that doesn't need to, to, to be a formal request. Um, so I think that this, this dynamic and this discussion can work both ways, and we need to do our part, and if we set something up in terms of a workshop setting or perhaps a board item, there can just be more clarity uh, provided to, to uh, staff at the county, employees at the county, the press, the public, everyone involved. So I think that that's what Supervisor Brown is attempting to do, and I, and I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Supervisor McKellen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Supervisor Smith mentioned setting a tone, and I think it's very important uh, that we do that correctly. There's some members of the press and some members of the public have a certain perception about government in general and perhaps county government in particular. And we can either uh, adopt policies and act in a way that, that reinforces that perception or that changes it. And I'd like to see us change it to the extent people have a negative perception. And so uh, even though, and I appreciate the clarification from county council, I was thinking to myself, I bet there's two sides to this story. But uh, 
it serves no one well to, to get into a fight over the issue. I think that even though uh, county staff is busy communicating with the public and the press, which communicates directly to the public, is a high priority for us. And we should take the time and we should, in fact, uh, see it as an opportunity to tell our side of the story, our perspective on what we do in a context of an interview rather than when some issue is hitting the front page and we're in a defensive or reactive mode. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can all kind of learn from this and move forward because I, I do agree with the comments that uh, we are not trying to keep information from the public. That's certainly not my intent. In fact, I think currently we have a board that's very intent on making information available and really getting the answers to questions that a lot of people have had. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to quickly respond, being as everybody else has. You know, this board, and actually the previous board too, we've spent a lot of effort and considerable taxpayers' dollars to put more information out there on the web. Uh, the CEO's office, not only the CEO's office, but our office, the clerk of the board's office, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, dealing with people to the public's request as people come to the door and want this and want that. And, and just a quick comment, though, on, on the news media. I mean, as Supervisor Koufax said, you know, quoted Mark Twain about you don't want to argue with somebody that buys their ink by the barrel. But uh, I would urge the public to spend more time reading the facts and less time reading opinions. And uh, with that, we'll move on to uh, more public. Anybody else want to speak on any issue? Sure. If you're next in line, please come forward. Uh, my name is Evan Johnson. I'm just trying to track down an item from yesterday, um, yesterday's agenda, item 2B, <coughs> about the planning update stuff. And I'm trying to find out maybe, maybe, Janine, are you, are you hiding that too? Is that, yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows when is that going to be discussed today, I don't see it on the agenda, but maybe it's there, or is it just buried? It's, it's right here before long it's next it's coming up here well yeah do I not see it's it? not next we still have got to get through public expression okay great thanks yeah. <laughs> chair pinches we did post an ad adjournment continuation notice so that was on the board chambers yes. and in the glass case yeah. just hang around here it'll be right after public expression sure good morning um, my name is Leslie Michael I'm with the Department of Child Support Services and we are here today because we're not feeling that we're being represented by our union or by our department. Um, we've written a letter that we just want to submit. That's all we're asking to do. Um, it is the position of the undersigned employees of the Mendocino County Department of Child Support Services that this department should be excluded from any future mandatory time off for the following reasons. This department is funded entirely by the state and federal government via funding which is earmarked specifically for this office and has no impact on the county budget. The Department of Child Support Services is actually revenue positive and reducing our work hours will provide no benefit to the county of Mendocino while working a hardship on our employees and the public we serve. For these reasons, we re request that the employees of this department be excluded from any future mandatory time off. Um, and we just you can submit the letter. letter and it will be distributed to board members. Thank you. Any other members of the public want to speak? Okay. There's none. Uh, with, with that, we'll move on to our agenda item number five, the uh, or agenda item number four, the approval of minutes. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of December 15, 2008? Supervisor Brown. Um, I'd like to move. Um, approval of the minutes of January 13th. Can we take them all together? Well, Mr. under Chairman? the circumstances, I think we let's just do them one at a time. Okay. I move to approve the minutes of the January 13th, 2009 board meeting. Okay. With that, do we have a second? Oh. Uh, Mr. Chair, actually, I think the January 13th and both through the 26th could probably all be approved at once. I don't know that there's any. Under one on my sheet here, I don't believe they've been put out yet. So it says it's continued to the next Oh, day. okay. So the motion is for oh, the- Then I'll, I'll second the motion. Second motion for approval of January 13th. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.